Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, here's your Thursday lecture. Let's jump right into it. So the first question asks, um, is this reaction above balanced? In other words, are there the same number of atoms on each side of the chemical reaction? Okay, so let's just take this one step at a time here. Let's look at the chemical reaction. So it's N2, two nitrogen atoms, plus 6H2, going to 2NH6. So if it helps you, you should be drawing, uh, if you want to, you can draw uh, parentheses around the, the molecular species, okay? So that you know the difference between a coefficient and a subscript, where this thing right there is called the subscript, right? N2 means there's two nitrogens, right? And then a, uh, a coefficient <clears throat> the coefficient is telling you how many of those molecules there are. So I actually want to draw this for you so here is one nitrogen, or excuse me, N2 molecule, right? This is, these are two nitrogen atoms. This is a molecule. You could say this is an N2 molecule, right? And then we add H2, which is H connected to another H. But then we have to multiply it by 6 because of that coefficient right there. So what does that give us? It gives us two of these things, whatever this is, NH6. So let's count the atoms on both sides. All right? Remember what these were called? What was the what was the left hand side of a reaction called? It was called the reactants and then the products were on the other side okay so what, what atoms do we have on the on the reactant side we have nitrogens so there's some N in there we have some hydrogens so how many nitrogens were there it looks like there was two on the left hand side how many hydrogens were there it was two times six which is twelve let's do the let's do the product side if there were hydrogens going in and nitrogens going in, then the on in the products there should be nitrogen and hydrogen coming out. So here they are. Here's nitrogen and hydrogen. But how many nitrogens do we have? Well, it's two times NH6. So one molecule of NH6 has one N. There it is. It's just one nitrogen. But since we have two of them, we have two nitrogens on the right hand side. What about hydrogens? Well, it's six times two, which is twelve. Right, it's just two of these molecules for a total of six plus six or twelve hydrogens. So you notice that they add up. They they are equal. This 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 uh, equation right here is balanced. Okay, so that was the answer. Yes, there are the same number of atoms on the left hand side and the right hand side. Okay. Next one said, uh, <clears throat> use the equation above. How many hydrogens are on the left? And we just we just did this. I we just I just showed you, but I will show you again because I want you to understand. Two N H six. It's asking how many hydrogens are on the left, how many hydrogens are on the right? Well, there's twelve on the left and twelve on the right. So it was this one. It was A. Uh, and then it asks how many nitrogens there are. And this is basically what you're doing when you're balancing an equation. You first got to learn how to count the atoms. <clears throat> so how many nitrogens are, are there on the left-hand side? Two. How many are on this side? Two. So it was two and two. This one right here. How many... Okay, so this was a, this was a challenge question. And if you got it wrong, don't worry about it. Um, it says... How many atoms, it's kind of a trick question a little bit. 
How many atoms are in 30 molecules of argon gas? Okay, so you got to go to the periodic table. We got to look at a periodic table. Okay, so here's here's argon right here. Now see this blue column? This periodic table has different areas and different sections, and this column here at the end is called the noble gases. They're known as uh, atoms that don't make bonds or molecules with any other uh, compounds. So what I mean by that is, for example, let's look at the first one, helium, the first noble gas up here in the corner. Okay, Helium does not have any hands to hold with other atoms. In fact, they're armless. So you'll never see helium in helium, for example, with a bond uh, in between. They don't bond. That's why they're called the noble gases, or neon down in here, neon. You'll never see neon hold hands with another atom because it doesn't have any arms. For example, we'll see carbon making bonds with different elements like hydrogens, right? Depending on how many hands those atoms have. But these noble gases don't have any arms, okay? And you didn't know that, and that's okay. Now you do. So now look what it says again. How many atoms are in 30 molecules of argon gas? So argon gas is an atom and a molecule, technically. It's a molecule of argon or an, a, an atom of argon, simply because it cannot, it's, a, it's an atom that cannot make any uh, bonds. It has no hands, right? It doesn't have any hands to hold. So it says, how many atoms are in 30 molecules? It's kind of a trick question. If you've got 30, uh, if you have 30 argon atoms, 30 molecules of argon, then uh, you must have 30 atoms of argon. It's pretty, it, it was just a trick question because you only have, you've only got argon in there, right? If I said, is another example. If I how many how many hydrogen atoms do I have in thirty moles of uh, they call it a mole uh, thirty molecules of hydrogen H two gas? It would be sixty atoms, right? Sixty atoms of H two. Okay. This one was easy. The law of conservation of matter or mass, because if you remember, all matter, anything that takes up space, ha uh, pretty much, especially for 7th and 8th grade, has mass. So the law of conservation of matter states that matter is conserved and it cannot disappear in a chemical reaction. Right? What does that mean? Oops. What does that mean? That means what goes in must come out. Okay? If you have some atoms, H, O, C, for example, hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. If hydrogen, and oxygen, and carbon go in, then what must come out is some number of hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. Hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon, excuse me. And the numbers must be the same. So if I have one hydrogen, one oxygen, one carbon go into some reaction, and then the reaction runs, when it comes back out, when the, when the, when the products come out of the reaction, they, they must have one proton, or excuse me, one hydrogen, one oxygen, and one carbon. Okay, so let's look at some of these answers. The number of the atoms, the number of atoms on the products and the reactant side can vary, but they do not need to be equal. We obviously know that that's not true. It's this one right here. The number of atoms on the products and the reactant sides do not vary. They don't. They're the same on each side, and they must equal each other. That's correct. Um, the look at the other uh, uh, answers. They can re they can release heat or absorb heat. Now that's true of chemical reactions, but it has nothing to do. This statement right here has nothing to do with matter being conserved. Okay, that's why that's the wrong answer. Even though this is technically true, it's not true for this. It's not true for matter being conserved. Same thing with they can release light energy. Can reactions release light energy? Yes, but uh, reactions releasing energy light energy have nothing to do with matter being conserved, okay? Okay, so... So, if you recall, I want to try to make some sodium metal, and I'm going to run this reaction here soon in the next day or so. 
um, when I get a little time. And if you may remember, this reaction is where I'm going to combine some Mg, it's called magnesium, plus some NaOH, sodium plus an oxygen plus a hydrogen atom, to make MgO, magnesium oxide, plus sodium, metal, plus hydrogen gas. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do this reaction with you guys. I'm gonna prove to you that I can extract the sodium atom out of what is basically a salt. It, it looks like table salt just sitting on the table, and take it out and turn it using a chemical reaction. I can turn that uh, sodium out away from these two uh, atoms here, this oxygen, this hydrogen, and make it sit by itself in a big pile of sodium atoms, okay? Just little sodium atoms sitting next to each other instead of having those that oxygen and hydrogen attached. Okay, so that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna do on Friday. Um, oh yeah, and I forgot I even added that. Oop, sorry, I forgot I even added that. Um, that's what magnesium looks like. It's kind of like a like it's called they're called magnesium turnings. Um, it, they definitely do not look like sodium. Okay, and I'll prove to you at the end, once I get the metal out, I'll prove to you that it's not magnesium. I'll put some of this material into water, and then you'll see what happens when I put sodium metal into water, and the reaction's completely different. So sodium hydroxide looks like that. It's just a salt. Yeah. <clears throat> Very dangerous salt, but a salt nonetheless. Uh, and then uh, out of the reaction, I'll get three products, something called the magnesium oxide, sodium metal, and hydrogen gas. And that's what the, that's what the, the ag they call it an aggregate, that's what it looks like. It's a mixture of sodium and magnesium oxides in there, and that purple kind of ashy looking stuff. Okay, so here's the question. Is this reaction balanced?